Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, What You Should Expect Through the USDA DOD Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program for FDPIR. My name is Janelle Walker, and I will be the moderator. Speaking today from the Program Integrity and Monitoring Branch, we will have Kathy Staley, Branch Chief, and Blair Tucker-Guchala, Program Analyst in the Food Distribution Division at the USDA Food and Nutrition Service. So take it away, Blair. Thank you, Janelle. And as Janelle stated, today we're going to talk about what you should expect through the USDA DOD Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program for FDPIR. The topics we will be covering are placing produce orders, receiving your produce orders, reporting feedback, storing produce, the shell egg pilot, who to contact and resources. Indian tribal organizations are responsible for placing orders in the fresh fruit and vegetable order receipt system, which is called favors, to order their fresh fruits and vegetables for their food packages. Orders should be placed in favors four days prior to the delivery day. Delivery days are scheduled by the produce vendor at the time of contract award. Orders must meet a delivery order minimum of $150. If an item from the FDPIR fruit and vegetable list is not on the favors catalog, then ITO should be contacting their DLA representative, the produce vendor, and the FNS regional office to request that item be added to the catalog. Please keep in mind that that is pending domestic availability and fair and reasonable pricing requirements. Also, ITOs should be notifying the vendor in advance of ITO holidays, weather, and building closures. time of delivery is when all ITOs should be inspecting produce. Orders are stacked on one pallet to make it easier for the driver who has multiple delivery locations. For those participating in the shell egg pilot, shell eggs will be stacked on the bottom of the pallet because it is a food safety requirement. As you are going through your order once it is delivered, you must reject produce that is not grown in the U.S. Please check the product packaging, not just the box that it is received in. As you can see from this photo, this product is from Mexico and should be rejected at the time of delivery. When the delivery truck arrives, as I mentioned, inspect the produce at the time of delivery. Verify that the produce received is grown in the U.S., checking the food packages along with the boxes. Reject produce that is not grown in the U.S. and put that produce back on the truck and request re-delivery. Then you want to make sure you're verifying the correct quantity and type of produce ordered is what is delivered report shortages or overages on the delivery document prior to signing. Please note that it is a standard contract requirement that deliveries are made Monday through Friday between 6 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. As the delivery is being unloaded, you're checking the produce for quality and condition issues. You're taking photos of the produce quality issues and the product labels for documentation. You're rejecting produce that is poor quality, and you're putting that rejected produce back on the truck and requesting re-delivery. In order for DLA to take action with a vendor not adhering to contract requirements, DLA needs documentation of any issue. Anytime 
there is an issue with produce quality and condition, availability, or delivery, ITOs must document the issue and report the issue to the DLA representative, the produce vendor, and the FNS regional office. All issues should be documented on the delivery document prior to signing the document. If the vendor does not address issues or if issues continue, report it to the USDA DOD Fresh at USDA.gov email. USDA will work in collaboration with DLA to ensure that issues are addressed. Also, after the delivery truck leaves, the order must be receded in favors within five days. Note items ordered and not received in favors. And as mentioned, report any issues with produce quality and condition and availability or delivery to the DLA representative, the produce vendor, and the FNS regional office. On this slide, it gives you an example of documenting issues in favors upon receipt. As you can see, celery is highlighted and it was delivered as poor quality. You want to ensure that you are documenting in favors as well as the delivery document any issues with your orders. After the order is accepted, it is important that you store the produce immediately. At the time produce is harvested, the product starts to decline, and this is because it is a perishable product. So some important variables to maximize produce life include storage temperature, rotation, and storage practices. Store produce immediately upon delivery. Coolers should be set at 38 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Date all produce the day it is received. Practice first in, first out, which is FIFO rotation, by placing new produce behind the older produce to ensure the oldest produce is used first. Check and record cooler temperatures each day. The fruits listed on this slide, these fruits produce ethylene and should be stored away from produce that is ethylene sensitive. These items should be stored together and kept in the carton. The vegetables listed on this slide are vegetable items that are sensitive to ethylene and should be stored away from the ethylene producing fruits that were mentioned on the previous slide. If only one cooler is available, keep lids on boxes, store vegetables as far away from fruits as possible, rotate produce, FIFO, first in, first out, only order what can be used in a timely manner. If produce moves in and out of coolers quickly, ethylene should not cause quality problems. The produce items listed on this slide should be kept closest to the cooler door at around 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The produce and items on this slide should be stored in the middle and back of the cooler where it's most coolest at 38 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And the produce items listed on this slide should be stored in a cool, dark area. The SDPIR USDA DOD Fresh Fruit and Vegetable List lists all of the items from the FNS 501 Handbook Exhibit O 
It lists all of the fruit and vegetable items and the various pack sizes that are available for each of the items. It also lists the items that are year round and seasonal. As you can see from this slide, many of the items, especially apples, have multiple pack sizes. So you can get those items in bulk items, which are count, or in bags. So please look at your FDPIR fruit and vegetable list for those items that have multiple pack size options. Vendors have been instructed to add seasonal items as they become available and the price is fair and reasonable. This seasonality chart provides the typical availability of seasonal items for distribution. Keep in mind that every year is different and depending on the region and growing conditions, availability can vary. And now I will turn it over to Kathleen. Thanks, Blair. That was a lot of helpful information. So I hope I can continue here and talk about some specific defects. So on each of these slides, these are items that are um, on the um, fruit and approved fruit and vegetable list. And you will notice that the contract spec requires that produce vendors are providing US number one or better quality produce. So we're going to try to help you identify what is US number one and what are the issues that you should be paying attention to. So US grade standards are developed by the Department of Agriculture working in cooperation with all stakeholders and they provide a uniform language for describing quality and condition of fruits and vegetables. And it creates a common language so that um, everyone is talking um, and has the same understanding. So here we are talking about apples, which is one of the products that are available year round. <clears throat> the most production is in Washington, New York, and Michigan. Apples are available on the list in a 40 pound carton, as Blair said, that's count, um, and they are tray packed, or you can order 12 three pound film bags or eight five pound film bags red or green apples. They must be US number one, clean, firm to firm ripe, fairly well formed. Some common defects, as you will see here on the slide, at the bottom I have a clearly identified a bruise, um, which is easily identified on the um, green fruit. And then to the far right is an apple that has advanced decay. As apples are available year round, they're typically harvested in the fall and then put into cold storage or controlled atmosphere storage. And then when they come out, they can start to deteriorate. You also want to pay attention to internal breakdown as the fruit um, ripens. A common defect that you may find in bag fruit are the stem punctures from the um, one apple hitting another apple. Here we have asparagus. So asparagus is a seasonal item, and I specifically included this because we are getting into um, the time of year when domestically produced asparagus will be available. Common availability is March through May. So a US number one asparagus should look just like this photo, firm with closed compact tips, and good green color. You want to pay attention to the where the asparagus has been cut at the, at the butt, that that is um, not decayed. Another um, product that is available year round is broccoli. So that is a bunch broccoli, it comes 14, Bunches to a carton, US number one should be firm, good green color. Common defects, as you will see to the right, are yellowing of the bud clusters. 
You also, on this product, want to check the decay of the stem ends. A common um, issue, and I experience this sometimes when I leave my broccoli in the refrigerator a little too long, is if you put it in cold water, it will revise that slightly wilted broccoli. Brussels sprouts. These are a very popular item right now in restaurants. So here is a photo of US number one. These are a seasonal item, typically av available in the fall, winter, September through January. California produces the most Brussels sprouts. A common defect that you would see on Brussels sprouts is yellow to brown to black discoloration. But this is a nice photo of a good quality US number one. Carrots. So carrots are available also year round. California, Georgia, Texas, and Michigan are produce the most carrots. We offer carrots um, two different ways in the 48 one pound film bags. Those are the large whole carrots. And then the very popular baby carrots um, in the 31 pound film bags. So I will take a moment um, one of the requirements on the baby carrots is they must be delivered with at least seven days of shelf life remaining. So if you see the arrow and follow to the far right, there is a date on the carrots, um, best if used by, and I believe it is March 3rd. So these carrots are um, good to go. And as we get into March and St. Patrick's Day, everyone like cabbage becomes very popular. So here is a photo of a US number one. Again, this is a product that is available year round, California, Florida, New York, and Texas. Good cream color, um, common defect on this product is discoloration of the leaves, especially around the edges. A yellow to brown discoloration. And again, you want to turn the head over. Common area for decay is in the butt. Cauliflower. So we have to the left a beautiful head of US number one cauliflower, which has that white to creamy white um, curd. It's nice and firm. It has the good green color. It's compact. To the left, to the right, excuse me, we have a common defect, the brown to black discoloration of the curd. So um, cauliflower is um, available at a 12 count. Um, cauliflower is typically commercially film wrapped and put 12 into a tray. Sorry. Again, another photo of a nice, uh, U.S. number one, good green color. Again, another product that is available year-round. California is where most of our celery is produced. You want the stalks to be green and crisp, the leaves to have good green color. Again, as celery ages, you're going to see the um, leaves start to yellow and discolor. Um, that's very common defect. The other is depending on weather conditions, you want to check that the stalks um, have not become pithy. You're looking for that um, good crisp stalk. Onions. So we have both yellow and red, pictures of US number one. Um, on the left, you see the yellow onions and you see some um, dirt and staining on the um, outer skins, that is allowable. And you see on the right, the red, some discoloration. And again, that is all permitted in a US number one. The bottom corner, clearly you start to see the deterioration, which is the K um, on the onions. Oranges, a very popular fruit that is available year round. Again, most production is in California and Florida. 
the U.S. number one on the top right, you see a well-formed, firm, good color navel orange. Common defects are um, skin breakdown, bruising, broken skin, and decay. So you see the beginning, uh, early stages of decay and a little mold forming um, on the far right bottom photo, you see very advanced. Um, common problem with citrus is as you have one piece of fruit that starts to decay, they start to rub against the other and you get contact spot and the decay spreads to the other oranges. Green peppers. So this is a seasonal item, typically available May through September. US number one should be good green color, firm, fairly well shaped. Green peppers are one of those products that are susceptible to chilling injury. You want to keep those closest to the door of the cooler where it is warmest. Um, common defects, shriveling, which is caused by um, them being too cold, bruising, decays of the wall, and then another very common defect on um, peppers is you will start to see decay on the stems. Peppers will start to turn color as they age. Um, a green pepper can actually turn red. So here is um, an actual photo. Um, I took this recently at the grocery store as I was shopping and this pepper was out available for sale. So it has two common defects. It has the discoloration and this pepper is turning, green pepper is turning yellow. And then on the far right shoulder, you see that nice bruise. You want to avoid fruits and vegetables that have bruises because as the skin gets broken, that becomes an avenue for decay. Here is um, a photo of a pepper that um, has started to shrivel and you will commonly see that on the shoulders. And then on the right is yellow squash and um, some scarring discoloration. Because of the light color of the yellow squash, um, it is very susceptible to that type of um, defect of discoloration or as it's growing, um, wind can pick up the dirt and it can get um, scarring. Here are um, russet potatoes and red potatoes and these items are available year round. Again, US number one, probably the most common defect that you see on potatoes is soft rot. Um, and if you ever opened up a bag of potato, all it takes is one potato with a little soft rot and you can smell it. Then we have radishes. Um, radishes come in a film bag, 36 ounce or 14 one pound or 12 one pound. Um, and radishes are available year round. So you see on this um, bag, the film bag, it says US number one, and it also clearly says produce of USA, and they are promoting that it is domestic product. That product has um, a flag on it. It is not uncommon for produce vendors to sometimes, um, as they're picking orders, to take products such as bagged radishes out of the packaging that it came in to provide the quantity to meet the customer's needs. So that was what Blair was referring to earlier. You want to make sure. So if you got radishes in a carton that said produce of, here's the bag that says produce of USA, but it happened to be in another carton for another product that did not say produce of USA, this is, this is acceptable. The radishes are clearly marked produce of USA. Summer squash. So this is a seasonal item and there's two types of summer squash, the yellow squash and the zucchini. So you can clearly see the difference here in this yellow squash that it does not have that discoloration or scarring and then the um, zucchini. 
What you're looking for in zucchini is that it's firm and tender and shiny um, skin. So common defects are cuts, discolorations, um, especially on the yellow squash, and then again, checking the stem for decay. This is um, a common misconception because we all like to have our home gardens and sometimes the yellow squash and the zucchini get away from us. The ideal is that smaller, young, tender um, zucchini and yellow squash, not that um, you know, foot long zucchini that got away because you weren't paying attention to the garden. So we are looking for product that is small, young, and tender. So here we have a photo of US number one sweet potatoes. What can I say about sweet potatoes? Um, this has been a tough year for sweet potatoes because of the weather. Um, this is a seasonal product. Um, but these, you can still see there are some defects, but this still meets a US number one. And then a very popular item, cherry tomatoes. Nice, bright red, good green um, stems. These calyxes, these all meet a US number one. These, this is a seasonal item in the, um, on the list. And then we have the round red tomatoes. So to the right, we have a US number one. Again, nice red, no bruising, um, no discoloration, no sunken areas on the shoulder. Uh, the calyx is still attached and it's nice and green. The photo on the left shows a carton of tomatoes that has um, begun to decay. And you can see again, that there are several tomatoes in there that are um, decayed. So you want to pay attention as you're opening up the cartons. If you have one or two tomatoes or any of these products that you see have defects or decay, that still meets the US number one. It's when it becomes um, a large quantity of the fruit has defects, that's when you want to reject it. So here we have a photo of romaine lettuce. Again, to the right, nice green, good color, no discoloration. The romaine lettuce, um, California and Arizona is where most of the production for romaine comes from. To the right, you start to see, um, and again, this is probably one of the most common defects on romaine, is that small spot just above the word decay, where the, um, it starts to disintegrate. You also want to check the butts of the romaine because that's a common area. Um, another common defect with romaine is discoloration of brown to black of the leaf edges because it gets burnt um, in the field um, before it gets harvested. So another seasonal item is winter squash. So we have acorn and um, butternut, both um, photos of US number one. Um, these are available at this uh, fall, winter. So um, before too long, we will be seeing the summer squash coming and taking over. And here is um, the other summer winter squash that is available, and that's the spaghetti squash, US number one. So you do see a little, again, like the summer yellow squash, because of the light color, you see some scarring and discoloration, but that is all permitted as a num US number one. And so that is, um, some common defects and what US number one should look like when you are receiving produce. And now I will turn it back over to Blair to talk about the shell egg pilot. Thank you, Kathy. During the pilot period, 
one dozen shell eggs replace the powdered egg mix participants receive each month. The shell eggs will be delivered by the produce vendor through the USDA DOD Fresh program. To participate in the pilot, your site must have adequate refrigeration space to store a one to two week supply of shell eggs. At the time of delivery, the shell eggs should have a minimum of 14 days shelf life. If they don't, they should be rejected. Only approved ITOs can see the shell eggs on the catalog and order them each month. The shell eggs should arrive and be delivered in individual dozen carton containers. As I mentioned, they should have a minimum of 14 days shelf life remaining when they're delivered. And when you receive them, you want to make sure you're opening the carton to look at the eggs and make sure they're clean and shells are not cracked. And they should be stored at a temperature of 40 degrees or below. So when reporting issues in the USDA DOD FRESH program, we created a USDA DOD FRESH program feedback tip sheet. We recommend that you print this document out for reference in how to report your complaints to the DLA rep, the vendor, and your FNS regional office. This tip sheet is extremely helpful in providing all of this information and what you should be looking for and noting as you receive your order. We also wanted to provide a sample email on how to report your issues. The email should be addressed to the DLA representative, the DOD produce vendor, and then your regional office should be copied. It's important also to include the delivery date of your order. As you can see in this email, the items will be listed below with for the produce delivery on 11320, and they attach the produce receipt for that delivery. The email includes the date of the delivery, the time the delivery started, the delivery truck, the temperature of the truck when it arrived, when it finished, when, when it was finished delivering or uh, unloading the truck, and then the temperature at the, at the end. And then also it includes the issues. For broccoli, there were six cases ordered and none were received. For the cauliflower, there were eight cases of cauliflower ordered and none were received. All the other produce items were received in good condition and all were products of the USA. This is a very helpful template when you're emailing your issues about the produce orders that you're receiving. And, and Blair, if I could jump in again, this is the documentation that our partners over at um, DLA need to hold the vendors accountable to the um, contract requirements. They need specific documentation. So that's why we included this example. This is exactly the type of information that is needed so that they can take action and hold the vendors accountable. And to add to that, if there are product quality issues, this email should be accompanied by pictures of the issues of the product quality along with the labeling of that product. So now we want to give you um, a couple examples of common um, issues or feedback that we receive from ITOs related to the USDA DOD Fresh. So Blair, what do you do if you receive produce not grown in the U.S.? If I receive produce not grown in the U.S., it should be rejected immediately and put back on the truck. It should be documented on the delivery document prior to signing and immediately reported to the DLA representative, the produce vendor, and the FNS regional office. And you should request re-delivery of U.S. grown produce. Thanks, Blair. What do I do when produce items ordered are not delivered? And I've really been counting on that. 
So when the produce items are not delivered, immediately contact your DLA representative, your produce vendor, and the FNS regional office and request that those items be re-delivered. Um, so we have a question that has come in. Where do we get the template? Um, can we download it? This was just an actual email that we um, received, but we can certainly create a template and share it. So thank you for that great suggestion. All right, Blair, what do I do if I notice, you know, the produce truck came in, I unloaded it, I didn't see any issues, and it's a couple days later, and the recipients are here, and we're putting the food packages together, and I notice poor quality produce. So if you're noticing poor quality produce as you're putting the produce order in the cooler, you want to make note of what items you're, you're seeing the poor quality produce, and you want to take pictures of that poor quality produce along with the packaging, and you want to report that to the DLA representative, the produce vendor, and the FNS regional office. You want to request redelivery of those produce items and then document the issue when receiving in favors. So I think an important point to remember here is that, as Blair mentioned earlier, produce is very perishable, and that's why you want to make sure that you're only ordering what you can use. So if the produce has been sitting in your cooler for a week or longer, we, we cannot go back to the vendor um, and, and say that they delivered poor quality product. So th it needs to be when the it's very important that you are inspecting the produce when the truck arrives. If it is, you know, um, 24 hours later, we still want you to report it. But if it gets any longer than that, um, again, because this is a perishable product. And our last, what to do. So Blair, I received shell eggs in flats, not cartons. It's kind of hard to distribute when they're in flats. What do I do? If you're participating in the shell egg pilot, and for all of those ITOs that will be participating in the shell egg pilot, you want to report that immediately to your DLA representative, the produce vendor, and your FNS regional office. And then you want to request re-delivery of the eggs in the appropriate cartons. And then document this issue when receiving in favors. So we get a lot of questions on who ICOs should notify and when. So we created this chart to give you an idea of who you should be contacting for specific issues. So, when you're rejecting poor quality produce, you should notify the vendor, the DLA rep, and the regional office. Um, for all, actually, for everything on the left hand side, you should be contacting your DLA rep, your vendor, and your regional office. So, rejecting poor quality produce, rejecting produce not grown in the US, quantity ordered not delivered. Ask the vendor to, and DLA to add a produce item not listed in the catalog, and then notifying vendor and DLA of an ITO holiday or closure due to weather. On the right-hand side is when you contact the USDA DOD Fresh mailbox for recurring delivery of poor quality produce, recurring deliveries of produce not grown in the U.S., recurring delivery shortages, and vendor does not provide a response. So Blair, if I'm going to send an email to the USDA DOD Fresh Mailbox, is it going to be the first time I reject produce not grown in the U.S.? No, that email should go to your DLA representative, your vendor, and your regional office. If you continue to receive produce not grown in the U.S., that's when you want to contact the USDA DOD Fresh Mailbox and let us know, and we will work with DLA to ensure the vendor discontinues sending non-domestic produce. So, Blair, let me ask a question. If I get an email at the USDA DOD Fresh Mailbox, what's the first question I'm going to ask if someone reports that they've been receiving non-domestic produce? Have you reported it to your DLA rep, 
your vendor and your regional office. It is very important that when you're receiving this product that you're notifying DLA um, of the issues. DLA um, is who holds the contracts with these vendors and they must be notified of these issues first. So again, Blair, the important thing is we're going to ask, have you documented it and has it happened more than once? So again, I'm going to document it on the favors receipt and I'm going to document it on the bill of lading. Exactly, Kathy. So <clears throat> many of you have seen this before. Um, but we wanted to make a couple changes so that it is tailored specifically for ICOs. On the top row, we have all of the branch chiefs in each of the regions. Please note that DLA regions are different from FNS regions. Under each of the branch chiefs, it lists all of the DLA representatives that are responsible for the states um, that have ITOs. Please note that in the North Central Region, Michael Cianfrani is the branch chief and Joe Miller is no longer with um, DLA, he retired. So to accommodate him retiring, we have um, a couple states, we have all of his states that are separated and the DLA reps that will be responsible for those states. So it's important for those states in Kansas, Minnesota, Nebraska, North Dakota, South Dakota, Michigan, and Wisconsin, you are emailing both people listed for your state when you are reporting your complaint. Each state, again, has a representative, so please make note of who your representative is, which is listed by state. We've also provided um, the produce vendor contact information. We've gotten a lot of feedback about not having your vendor's contact information. So in addition to providing our contact information, the DLA rep contact information, we also wanted to provide the produce vendor contact information. As we stated earlier, um, for recurring issues or even program questions, please email the USDA DOD Fresh at USDA.gov mailbox. We've also included additional resources for those that are new to the USDA DOD Fresh program or for those who need a refresher on past webinars and the basics of the uh, FDPR, FDPIR USDA DOD FRESH program, and then two links to our uh, previous webinars on receiving uh, fresh produce. Another resource is the FDPIR produce list, which is um, Exhibit O in the FNS Handbook 501, which lists all of the approved items that are year-round vegetables, year-round fruits, seasonal vegetables, and seasonal fruits that are allowed to be exchanged for the canned fresh fruit or canned vegetable and fruit items. And oh. that concludes the webinar. All right, well, I want to thank Blair and Kathy for providing a very comprehensive overview of what you should expect through the USDA DOD Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program. Now, before we transition to the question and answer section of this webinar, I would like to turn everyone's attention to the polling questions. Please take a few seconds to complete the survey questions. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the question and answers. Um, we've had a few questions come in. So if you would like to ask a question, you can use the Q&A box, which again can be found on the right of your screen. Just type in the text box and click send and you will receive your question. If you would like to ask a question over the phone, you will need to unmute your phone, state your name and ask your question. However, if you do not plan to ask a question over the phone, please keep your phone muted. This will help to keep the audio clear so that everyone can hear the questions and answers. 
So I am actually going to start with the questions that have come in online, and then we will transition to what we have over the phone. We will try to get to as many questions as possible, and if we are not able to get to all of the questions, feel free to send your questions in to our USDA foods at usda.gov mailbox. All right, so the first question is, we've been receiving our eggs in a dozen, in dozen cartons. Do we need to change it to a two and a half dozen flat? No, you should be receiving your eggs in the dozen cartons. That is the appropriate carton for the shell egg pilot. If you are receiving flats, you want to report that to the DLA representative, the produce vendor, and the FNS re regional office and re request re-delivery of the eggs in the appropriate dozen carton containers. Well, thank you, Blair. I have another question for you. So I just started the USDA DOD Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program at my ITO. I wasn't really sure about what people were going to take, and I misjudged the baby carrots, and they're past the, the date that's on the package. If they still look good, um, can I keep them and try to push them off on the participants, or should I just go ahead and throw them away? So, um, unfortunately, if you have the baby carrots, if they're past the date, you do have to damage those out. Um, but one of the things that Kathy mentioned earlier is you want to make sure that you're ordering what your participants need and what will be used and distributed in a timely manner. Um, so if it is past the best if used by date, no, you cannot distribute them to participants. All right, well, thanks, Blair. That clears it up for me. We've gotten a few questions about the information on the slide. So we did send an email out this morning with, the, with a copy of the slides. We will also send out this information again along with the recording of this webinar. So uh, take a peek at your email within the next week and you will be able to find that information. I'll take one more question through the chat feature before we open up the lines. The next question is, what if our fresh delivery truck driver is late and lets us know he will be in around 3.30 p.m.? Do we still accept it or have him come back on the next day? So um, I'm happy to hear that the truck driver notified you um, that he was going to be late and be there by 3.30. So no, you should accept it. So the reality is that um, Unfortunately, due to traffic, weather, many other circumstances, these produce trucks are making multiple deliveries um, and they may get delayed. So please try to work with them. Um, and we are really working with our partners at DLA as they work with the vendors to make sure that there is good communication. So that driver did exactly what we want. When they're going to be late, they notify you. So. Um, Thank you for that. Blair and Kathy, uh, what if the fresh produce doesn't come in marked from where it is from? What do we do? Um, so that's um, um, a issue, um, Janelle. So I would suggest that they um, make a phone call to the produce vendor who should be able to tell them where that, pro or first is, ask the driver, the driver may not know, first ask the driver or then call the produce vendor to find out where the produce is from. All right, have another question for you all. What if we receive food that's not on our produce order? How do we handle that? So if you receive uh, food that is not on your produce order, you can put that back on the produce truck. Okay, so return it, put it back on the truck and yep. they will take it away. Yep. All right. Again, if you have a question, please use the Q&A box to submit your question. All right, we have another question for Blair and Kathy. Can I take what I didn't order instead of putting it back on the truck if I can use it? Yes, you can keep it if you can um, use it and distribute it in a timely manner. 
um, you just want to make sure that it's a product on the FDPIR, USDA, DOD fresh fruit and vegetable list. So, Blair, a great example that we've gotten calls about is, um, the, again, these produce drivers are making multiple um, deliveries, and this program also services our school customers. So, if I mistakenly have strawberries delivered to me um, and they look yummy, is it okay for me to accept them? No, they should be put back on the delivery truck and sent back to the vendor because they are not an approved item in the FDPIR program. Okay, so I have another question. So what should we do if we order onions in 16 three-pound bags, but they arrive in bulk? You should notify your DLA rep, your vendor, and the FNS regional office and let them know that you placed an order for the 16 three-pound bags and you received bulk and you can request re-delivery of that item or at the time of delivery, if, it is, if you're able to do so, you can reject that item because it is not what you ordered and request re-delivery of what the pack size that you'd like, which is what you've noted, the 16 three-pound bags. And again, if you look at the FDPIR, USDA, DOD, fresh fruit and vegetable list, all of the onions um, that are offered come in, um, are bagged. Oh, all right, so we have a question about a truck driver. Well, poor truck drivers, they have a tough job. Um, and I have heard this before, that sometimes the truck driver comes in and they may be having a bad day um, and all they want to do is get home. And they're tired of having to deal with problems. So the truck driver says, no, I'm not putting that rejected produce back on my truck. Well, that is a requirement. And if the truck driver is giving you a hard time, I would stop and make the phone call. Um, and let your DLA rep and the vendor know that the truck driver is not accepting the rejected produce, be it that it is not U.S. grown or that it does not meet the quality requirements of U.S. number one or better. Are potatoes required to arrive in the paper bale to prevent the light getting to them? Um, no, potatoes are not required to be um, delivered in paper bales. That's why um, in our storage information that we suggest that potatoes prefer not to be put in the cooler, but to find a cool, dark spot um, in the warehouse to store the potatoes. All right, well, I want to thank Kathy and Blair for sharing information on what you should expect through the USDA DOD Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program for FDPIR. I also want to thank all of you for joining us today. This webinar was recorded and will be sent to all participants by email when it is available on YouTube. We will also send the slides to accompany the webinar. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at USDA Foods at USDA.gov. Well, that is all for today. Thank you for joining us.